a Saturday night, 24 years ago in the Melbourne suburb of Preston, John Stambolis was walking along this street after an evening drinking with a mate. As dramatised in this Crime Stoppers video, these were the last steps he took. John was struck with such violent force, one of his shoes was flung 55 metres from where his body was found. From our perspective, that shows high speed, um, sort of around the 90 to 93 kilometres an hour. It was a stolen car, they're not going to stop, because I left him for dead. More than two decades later, the crime still haunts John's father. So John was the youngest of three? Yeah. I don't know, but I miss him. But what, what can you do? That's, that's life. But the investigation is far from over. The stolen statesman that struck John was abandoned streets away from the scene of the crime. Witnesses reported seeing two men inside. And both of them may have left evidence that now 24 years later, could help track them down. Blood. So it's quite possible that the driver or the passenger has received an injury uh, as a result of the collision that caused the death in this particular instance. At the time, the blood was brought to this building. DNA profiling was in its infancy back then. It was expensive, it was complicated, and it needed a large sample of blood. So the blood from the statesman was only analysed for typing purposes. But as unsolved fatal cases are never closed, the samples were never thrown away. A few months ago, investigators took a fresh look at John's case. They decided the blood found in the statesman should be DNA profiled for the first time. This is all completely sterile, isn't it? Because it's really important that we don't add any of our DNA or extraneous DNA to this. That's correct, yes. So it's just a matter of taking a small sample of the stain and adding it to a tube like this. So this goes off to the lab? That's correct. How long does it take to get a full profile if we were going to try and obtain it from this little sample? Um, it could take us uh, up to maybe 24 hours before we could obtain a DNA profile, um, as little as 12 hours, but yeah, usually about 24 hours we can get a, a DNA profile from that. And that's what you can talk about in court and show people it's one of those little charts showing what your profile looks like, all the different alleles, etc. That's correct, yes. The DNA profile is then entered into a national database, joining more than 700,000 others taken from crime scenes, suspects and convicted criminals. So what does it take to obtain a full DNA profile? It could be a tiny drop of saliva from a cup. It could be a bead of sweat where somebody has touched a wall. It could be a drop of blood, a single hair. So it's actually very difficult for criminals to not leave their biological signature at a crime scene. And that means the elusive driver or passenger of the statesman that hit John may be only one step away from arrest. If the offender's DNA is ever retrieved for another reason, they will be caught. Exactly right, and that's, uh, it's a national database, so they get arrested for shoplifting over in Perth tomorrow. Uh, they get profiled, we'll find out about it, and we'll be coming to talk to them. This is going to be resolved, um, uh, not really if, um, it's a matter of when 